Well, hello, fellow students of philosophy. Congratulations, you made it through the semester. I'll bet you thought you saw the last of me, but you haven't quite yet, unless, of course, you choose not to log into Canvas, in which case you will not see this message, which is simply one of warm holiday wishes to you and your families uh, this uh, coming season. Whatever you do, I hope you do it safely, and uh, also get out of the cold. If you have any questions at all about your grade, uh, please don't hesitate to email me within the next couple of days. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the weekend uh, up until grades are due. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a break. In what follows, I have uh, a summary of brief takeaways. Uh, I think uh, any student of philosophy or ethics uh, ought to sort of uh, uh, carry with them as they exit the semester. I wish you every success in your academic undertakings in the future, and I hope I'll see you next semester one way or the other. Take good care now. Talk to you soon. I say again, that daily to discourse about virtue and of those other things about which you hear me examine myself and others is the greatest good of man, and that the unexamined life is not worth living. <laughs> what an incomprehensible being you are, Socrates. When you're in the country, as you say, you really are like some stranger who is led about by a guide. Do you ever cross the border? I rather think you never venture even beyond the city gates. Well, very true, my good friend. And I hope that you will excuse me when I tell you the reason. Which is that I am a lover of knowledge. And the men who dwell in the cities are my teachers, and not the trees or the countryside. But I do indeed believe that you have found a spell to draw me out of the city and into the country, like a hungry cow before whom a bough or a bunch of fruit is waved. For well, bud hold before me in like manner a book, and you may lead me all round Attica, and indeed over the wide world. I tell you that virtue is not given by money, but that from virtue comes money and every other good of man public as well as private. Strange indeed would be my conduct to men of Athens, if I, who when I was ordered by the generals at Potidaea and Amphipolis and Delium, remained where they placed me, like any other man facing death. If now, when, as I conceive and imagine, God orders me to fulfill the philosopher's mission of searching into myself and other men, if now I were to desert that post through fear of death or any other fear, that would indeed be strange. And so, if you say to me, Socrates, this time you shall be let off, but upon one condition, that you are not to inquire or speculate any more, if this was the condition on which you would let me go, I should reply, Men of Athens, I honor and love you, but I shall obey God rather than you. And while I have life and strength, I shall never cease from the practice and teaching of philosophy, exhorting anyone whom I meet and saying to him after my manner, You, my friend, a citizen of the great and mighty and wise city of Athens. Are you not ashamed of heaping up the greatest amount of money and honor and reputation and caring so little about wisdom and truth and the greatest improvement of the soul which you never regard or heed at all? Wherefore, O oh judges, be of good cheer about death and know of a certainty that no evil can happen to a good man either in life or after death. Therefore I say, let a man be of good cheer about his soul, who having cast away the pleasures and ornaments of the body as alien to him, has sought after the pleasures of knowledge and has arrayed his soul in her own proper jewels. Temperance and justice and courage and nobility and truth. And thus adorned, she is ready to go on her journey to the world below when her hour comes. <laughs>